Hi everybody, Andy McPhee here, uh, along with uh, Doug Kenny, uh, the main host of Relentless and Unstoppable. As with each series we do, I let people know how this started. Relentless and Unstoppable started about a year and a half ago after my coaching and mentoring of Doug for six and a half years. Doug is an incredible human being who was um, he's dealing with high functioning autism and at school he was dealing with obesity and bullying and depression and medication and hospitalization all those things that tend to come along with when you're dealing with something in life and Doug over the last few years we've had an amazing journey he's gone from 300 pounds to down to close to under 200 now he does yoga running walking he's now into bodybuilding which we organized and, and helped him you know do it the correct way his diet is incredible and it's an inspiration of his story which is why I created this channel and since then I think Doug said to me the other day and he can confirm this we've had probably 181,000 views over the last year or so which is great for a couple of guys who have no idea what they're doing <laughs> at all like zero but we're getting better and I'm actually learning off Doug now because uh, he is he is very relentless uh, he never gives up so doug i'll hand it over to you to introduce our amazing guest yeah absolutely and um yeah so i i, I gained confidence from those three screenplays as a writer um right now i'm adapting another uh, i adapted um i'm adapting as a producer a story of a woman named janine shepherd who i know you've had on your show mm. um and her life story, um, you know, as a, as a person who overcame um, disability to triumph and be defined and, and live a very outstanding life. Um, I've adapted a treatment about the, the Battle of Hammerdown, which was a, one of the US military's most violent engagements in the war in Afghanistan um, in 2011, in which numerous people's lives were lost. I've inter interviewed a gentleman whose entire face was shot off. Um, wow. Um, and who was rescued by a very extraordinary woman um, who was a medevac, um, Julia Bringlow. And I've become very close with the um, helicopter pilot, um, Eric Sabiston, who flew the Black Hawk that, that dropped her in. So wow. I've, 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 Basically, I feel like God's given me all these incredible opportunities to, to, to meet extraordinary people, often who are touched by God in, in many ways. I mean, uh, and, and it's, it's, and I have done nothing to attract these stories to me, you know, so I feel yeah. like I've just been really blessed. And going back to Jason, what, what happened with Jason was like he remembered this kind of extension of kindness that I was in a position to give him when he was down and out on his luck. And when he went home, he managed to turn things around and, and get his life back on track. And I think it was in 2018, I was in Sweden, my wife and children, uh, my wife's from Sweden and we were there on a holiday and I was running through the forest. I was jogging through the forest. It was really wet. And Jason rang me and he said, you know, I've been thinking, I've been thinking that I want to come back to the States, but I want to come back, you know, with a, with a company or some kind of vehicle or investment. And we'd thrown ideas around like uh, opening a, a coffee business, Australian coffee business in, in Los Angeles. What a mistake that would have been. Because <laughs> ah. <laughs> we all know how, how difficult hospitality is. But one day Jason rang me while I was in Sweden and he said, look, I've, I've been thinking about it, about where I want to invest my money. And I just, I want to invest it in you. And from that moment, this vision was born to create a, a film company. Um, and it took, it's taken us now three years to put this vision together, but it's uh, Resistor Films as we called it. Uh, and I'll explain why we, we chose that name in a second. But Jason essentially invested the money that, um, that we needed to start this business up um, and to, to, pull together a roster of directors that we could represent for short form content, meaning commercials, music videos, branded content, but also um, he invested in, in um, the, the material that we would need to option or buy or purchase um, or de develop, um, you know, as IP for feature films. 
So yeah. basically Resistor was born out of this desire to capture a, an era of filmmaking that we felt had long been lost. Um, the independent spirit of the early 90s um, filmmakers and also the early 70s filmmakers. And um, we pulled together a roster of very young but kind of unsung directors and, and directorial yeah. talent. And the theme through all the stories I tell and the people I work with is that they're all unsung heroes. You know, yeah. and, and the team that we're, we were able to bring together uh, under the Resistor umbrella is that it's, it's Jason and myself, but it's also uh, my brother-in-law, Ty Linegar, who comes from a, um, a tech and startup background. He's, he's very much the business mind behind our, our business model and, and he's the entrepreneur. Uh, and he knows a lot about new technology and crypto and, and where all, all this stuff's going and he's great yeah. finance. Um, and then another crucial piece of the puzzle is my producing partner, Michael Olmos, um, who is the son of Edward James Olmos. And he's a director in his own right. He's directed five feature films, extremely talented. He's uh, a very gracious and humble human being. And, and that's, that's what's brought us together is, is that we've found this commonality with each other and it's a bit of a sausage fest at the moment because we're all men but uh we are we do we are looking for for females that can join our you know our team and and help us make the the the, the create the creativity more diverse um and we have teamed up with a, a female producer on um harlem 58 but essentially what we've done over the last when the, when the pandemic hit it kind of put a wrench in the works and slowed everything down. Um, 2020 was actually a busier year for us than 2019, but 2021, for some reason, while everyone else was ramping up, we were slowing down with a, a lot of the short form content. So we just decided to focus on developing material. And over the past 12 months, we've not only refined these scripts and, and acquired a lot of the IP that I was working on with other producers, but we've managed to bring a lot of that content into our fold so some of the scripts that I was originally hired to write, we are now producers on, which is extraordinary because it, it makes me think about the biblical, you know, verse of, of, of um, uh, being the head, not the tail. And, and I, I think when you're, if, if, if you surrender to a vision that's greater than yourself and you can take your own ego out of the equation and uh, you can actually become entrusted with greater responsibility and i feel like that's what has happened with with me in, in my evolution in the in the past mm. few years now the 100%. pandemic i saw the pandemic as a as an opportunity because i tried to when it first when you know when 2020 the realities of it began began to encroach in us i i began to look through film history at other parallels of where have we, when have we been here before? And I think I mentioned this in the previous podcast, but the, the early 70s, you know, we were facing, uh, you know, America was in a big recession. Um, there was the um, Saudi oil, oil crisis was, you know, causing inflation of oil and, and, and multiple other problems. We were still in the Cold War, you know, uh, which mirrors kind of where we're at now with China. Um and politically, Americans were very disillusioned with their their leadership, you know, um, both, you know, a mirror of uh, like Jimmy Carter, Lyndon B. Johnson. There were mirrors of, of this sort of semi-disillusionment and divide that uh, just exists in the country now, you know, from one leader to the other. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I'm, I'm like, wow, in that period, though, however, artistically, Hollywood kind of thrived. And I think it was because movies became cheaper. You know, movies had to be cheaper. They, a lot of big sword and sandals epics like uh, Cleopatra, a lot of big Hollywood blockbusters kind of failed in, in the late 60s. So they had no choice but to kind of entrust younger filmmakers like Coppola and Scorsese and Spielberg and Brian De Palma and George Lucas with these kind of smaller films, um, which we're kind of breakout and I, and I feel like we're on the dawn, we're at the dawn of that now we're, we're at the dawn of an era where 
art, art actually goes up when when society is going down and the economy is going down and pol politics are going down. Art always thrives because people turn turn to cinema and they and they turn to literature and they turn to you know I think people are sick of the media and the media consumes so much of our attention that people yeah. are moving away from that. They're moving away from the CNNs and the Foxes and they're moving more into these kind of mythical worlds. You know, um, I think that's why something like Dune. Um, it, it can be so successful because it echoes what's going on now and the sentiment that's going on now, but it, it's so trans, it, it, it transcendent and, and transport, transports you to another place in time. And I think we're going to see that, but we're going to see some very bold and, and extraordinary films come out of the next few years. And we, as a company, we want to be at the forefront of that by, you know, identifying really diversive, divergent and and um and extraordinary talent um and that's why we called ourselves resistor because we want to go against the grain 